Hi, um, I'm just going to talk you through um, some video tutorials um, of doing your primary hue notations. Um, we're going to start out with the yellow um, or the yellows page. Um, you can see here that we have our uh, diagram for the yellows. We have our cool yellow, which is cadmium yellow light at the top, and that's this section here. And then we have um, the warm yellow. Uh, which is cadmium yellow medium, and that notation is right below. Um, I'm going to start uh, this first video, and then we'll just, again, I'll talk you through um, the process. Let's start here. Um, masking is that first step, right? You'll see I'm using drafting tape because that's what I have available um, in my house. And um, it's a decent tape. For masking but it's not going to be quite as good I think as your magic tape that you will be using so you're to use the magic removable tape and um, it's important that you seal the edge right here right that's right up against the pencil line um, where you're going to be painting so that you don't get um, any kind of bleeding um, past that edge right and out where the paint shouldn't be Okay, just about finished there. Again, sealing that inside edge. And again, you're going to be using your magic removable tape, which is clear. Okay, that is finished. That finishes um, this one. You are then going to be painting in um, your cadmium yellow light. All right, let's go to the next video. Um, and that is right here. Um, there's a little overlap here, right? <laughs> so this is showing you your cadmium yellow light, right? It's right here. Just put that tape back nice and secure. All right. And then um, I actually have a pigment that is different than cadmium yellow light, just because that's what I have on hand. Um, and that's available. So this is way more transparent than what you will have. So you'll see that when I apply it. Um, but I'm going to apply that. Let's just pretend it's cadmium yellow light. And we're going to apply that to this um, square. Notice I'll have a little bit of water. Sometimes it helps if you add the teeniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of water to the paint um, just to kind of help it not be too ridgy. Um, but really that probably shouldn't add that with this particular pigment because it's already super transparent than one I have. Yours will be a little more opaque um, and you can add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of water, just a little bit, okay? But you can see how see-through that is right now um, as, I, as I paint that on. A um, couple of things that are really important um, is that you um, spend a good amount of time, um, you know, you just, you want, a, I notice I'm using a big brush. Um, that helps me minimize the number of strokes and makes it less streaky. Um, I'm putting a fair amount of paint on my brush and I'm just kind of gliding it over the surface. Um, you want to think about not pushing too hard, keeping your pressure light so that the paint just glides right along top of the surface. And then I'm going to go kind of back and forth to help knock down some of the ridges um, that will appear on that surface. And again, that will help if you have a denser um, pigment and you have a little bit more ridginess. Um, you know, so for me, you also want to make sure that you get the corners right, right in there. Um, and that should be pretty good. The next step is, um, this is really important. Uh, you want to try to minimize the amount of paint that's going down the sink, um, because it's plastic, it's acrylic, right? So that acrylic will eventually clog up the sink as it dries in your drain. All right. So it's really important. Um, let's go to the next video. Okay, sort of a continuation of um, the brush. Oh, I didn't mute myself here on the video. That's okay though. Um, here I can mute. Uh, oh, I, I guess I can mute this. Um, in any case, 
So I, you can see how sort of vigorously I am cleaning that brush and trying to get as much solid paint on um, the paper towel as possible, right? That's super important. Um, and also because even though we are going to be mixing this same pure hue cadmium yellow light and our white, that's still really important to remove the paint. Um, I'm showing you how to remove the tape here. That's really important. Notice um, as I remove the paint, or sorry, remove the tape, that I have it at a bit of an angle, okay? Um, so that I minimize any tearing to the surface of the paper. This paper, if you are uh, if you did in fact get the sketchbook that I asked you to get, the paper is pretty good in terms of not tearing. Um, so you just want to be careful though, and it helps if you do it at an angle and you take your time, go slow, don't pull it directly straight up, pull it almost kind of fold it back a little bit. If you do that too much and, and you get that edge touching the paper, then you'll get yellow um, transferring from the tape onto places that you don't want it. So don't, you know, don't fold it directly back. Um, and that should be good. Notice we have nice clean lines here and edges. Um, Okay, so that's what you that's what you want. Um, you will see, right? Since again, I am using a different pigment and pretending that it is cadmium yellow light. Um, I'm going to be going over this surface again um, once it dries um, at the end, and you'll see me give it another coat just simply because it's not going. It's not. It's not. Um, it's too translucent right now. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, the hair dryer. This is important. Okay. Um, again, if you do not, I mean, if you have a hair dryer available, either you, one that you already use or somebody in your family or someone where you're living has a hair dryer, um, you know, use that. Obviously, you don't want to buy a new one if you have access to one already. Um, if you don't, then again, you should have, um, I, I really highly recommend you spending, what, the 10 bucks or something, a little less than 10 bucks to um, get that hair dryer just to speed up the drying time. Otherwise, it becomes a really slow process and you waste a lot of time uh, because there's not other things that you can do while you wait for the paint to dry. Um, and it's a quick drying paint. It's acrylic, but it does take a little bit of time. All right, so here we go for the next video. Okay. Um, and, oh, I think I forgot to <laughs> I'll try to turn this down. I think I forgot to um, turn that down. So right now I'm actually drying um, this inner square, the pure hue of cadmium yellow light, so that I can then mask off um, the cadmium yellow light and paint in my 50-50 tint, okay? So we'll go to the next video to show you that. Um, all right. All right, good. I oh, think I removed the sound from this. Um, all right, so now I am going ahead and setting up very carefully, aligning my tape and sealing very firmly against that, um, the inner edge where I'm gonna be applying paint right to that edge inside that edge here we go again right and again i'm doing this carefully um i'm you can see i'm not getting it on the first time right <laughs> so that redoing and redoing and repositioning so you know you're gonna end up having that experience so just kind of be patient expect it and um, that will be easier. Oh, I think right now, oh, okay, I'm gonna go and do all of this part. So I'm setting up for a little bit later too, so that I don't have to put that tape on when I get to the shade, but we are going to be painting just the tint over here. Um, I'm now going to mask off on top of the um, pure hue square. And I think I, right now I ran to get some scissors. So scissors are also um, a tool that you will be using for this. Okay, you're going to be um, cutting just at a little bit of an angle. Oops, I'm having some issues figuring out where to put my tape. 
All right, notice here, this is important. I You see a little sliver of the pure um, hue square, right? Um, at the top edge of that tape I just put down. And that is good. You want that little sliver of yellow showing so that you don't get a white gap between where between your 50-50 tint area and your pure hue um, area. You don't want any little white space, like a white line in between, okay? So just let the little front edge of yellow right here, right? Don't go all, don't tape completely over it. Just step back a tiny bit and that will allow you not to have a white gap, okay? Um, all right, so we've we've masked that, right, that corner, and we're ready to paint in this area here, okay? So I've got my setup here. Um, I've got my clean clean brush. I've got my water. Um, I've got my fake <laughs> cadmium yellow. Um, so you will also notice, you will probably, with your actual cadmium yellow, oh, I'm scraping up the leftovers, right? So you can use that. Um, and then I'm going to add to this, right? You will notice that you'll get a bit of a different result, right, with your what your colors look like here. Okay, so I'm just trying to approximate the amount of paint um, with my white, right, that is here. Um, even though they're a slightly different shape, that's probably pretty good. You want to do your best to get equal amounts of the um, the white and whatever pure hue you're mixing in. So it should be 50% pure hue, 50% titanium white, okay? And notice when I'm mixing, I'm smashing and then scraping up. I'm smashing with a hard pressure down on my palette paper, right? And with the back of my palette knife. Okay, that's really important. Now that I have it thoroughly mixed together, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water on my brush, even just putting my hands in and kind of wiping them on the brush. Notice I'm using a, a liberal amount of paint on there, and I am going to then start to go in and fill in this area. You can see I'm using a good amount of paint. That will sort of um, you know, spread out um, and I can kind of remove that by continuing to brush over this. All right. You can also, into this mixture, um, add a tiny, tiny, tiny drop of um, acrylic matte medium if you'd like. Right? You don't have to do that for this exercise, just so that you can see the real um, the sheen of each of these paint colors, I suppose. Notice how I'm really applying like a light grazing pressure on this, okay, with very light touch. Um, and that, again, will help to knock down the ridges of paint. That's pretty good. Um, again, I'm going to now remove as much solid paint from my brush as I can before I go to the sink. Um, when you can, you can use the water for this, right, but you don't want to swish the brush around in the water. Just dip it and don't move it while it's in the water. Otherwise, all of your paint will come out in the water and then you'll have to dispose of a lot of paint, you know, down the drain and we don't want to do that. 